universal struggle against oppression. This conference seeks to cultivate shared understanding among oppressed nations globally and to initiate collaborative efforts at the international level to combat various forms of injustices. We firmly believe that the unity and harmony of oppressed nations worldwide are imperative. The strength of our collective voice lies in our ability to unite and stand together. With this common struggle, our voices can be heard in adversity. Today's conference is not a mere gathering, but a platform for the oppressed to stand united against injustices together. Together we can amplify our voices, advocate for universal respect and fairness, and create a world where human dignity is upheld for all. Honorable guests, I urge your undivided attention to convey our people's pain, sufferings, and voices to all of you. When we use the term below genocide, we are often told that it is an exaggerated expression and that there is no genocide in Balochistan. Today I say to all those that in a region where there is a graveyard of unknown mutilated bodies is established, where children search for their beloved fathers on their streets instead of attending schools, where hundreds of peoples are collectively killed and their mutilated bodies are dumped in mass graves, where women became victims of collective punishment and 80 years old mothers protest on the streets, awaiting their children forcibly disappeared for the last 18 years. If all this does not constitute genocide in your eyes, then you need to create a new word in your dictionary for these atrocities. Balochistan is currently witnessing military operations, enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings, and forced displacements, which are affecting thousands of lives. While I wish to present the painful stories of every family and individual in Balochistan, it is impossible to share thousands of painful stories in this brief speech. Hence, I will highlight major oppressive incidents in Balochistan. In January 2014, two mass graves were discovered in Tutak area of Ghuzdar, District Balochistan. According to human rights organization, there were approximately 169 mutilated bodies, with only two of them have been identified. They were those who have been previously forcibly disappeared. The rest of the bodies were unrecognizable. Ponder upon them, the massacre of Baloch people in Balochistan has been normalized. Considering these 169 were not animals but human beings, imagine the pain with which they were killed and dumped into mass graves, providing a glimpse into the dire situation faced by the Baloch nation in their homeland, Balochistan. For those who believe that human rights violation in Balochistan are confined to enforced disappearances, I draw their attention to another painful problem that is also created by the violent state. Thousands of people of Balochistan have been forcibly disappeared from their hometowns in Balochistan. Forced displacement started after the military operations in 1973, but large scale of incidents escalated after 2005. During the 2005 military operations, many peoples, including areas like Dera Bukti, Kolu, Kahan, Avaran, Kolwa, Mashke, Jau, Balgatar, Shapok, and Dasht, these forced displaced families are now living in the worst situation in different areas of Balochistan, including interior Sindh, Karachi, Iran, Afghanistan, and other regions. Sadly, no human rights organization has adequately addressed the plight of these thousands of peoples. In Balochistan, there are thousands of families whose family members have been enforcedly disappeared. And I think I don't need to provide any reference or evidence for this, because today in this conference, there are dozens of families before you whose loved ones have been enforcedly disappeared. Many families present here 
have relatives who have been in falsely disappeared for more than 15 or 20 years. Even today, the number of victims the number of victims of falsely disappear is in the thousands. And the most crucial aspect is that, that the person who is in falsely disappeared not only endures difficulties, but the entire family of this person suffers for years. The thousands of families before you serves as an example of this. And they are witnesses of state barbarism. We traveled from Tawbat to Islamabad to show you your state atrocities. And they will haunt you until you live there. They will haunt you. One day we will go to our homeland. But remember this. These women holding the pictures of their loved one will haunt you forever. That what you have done to their homeland, what you have given them in the name of your so-called developmental projects, in the name of your so-called state, what you have given them. Here in this conference, there are people whose loved ones were extrajudicially killed. Notably figures like Mama Kadir Baloch, a senior human rights activist, experienced the extrajudicial killing of his son, Jalil Reiki. After his enforced disappearances, and also there is Balash, Balash Baloch's mother, Balaj, who faced the same fate, being extrajudicially killed after his enforced disappearances. Even after being presented in court, I received the mutilated body of my father, Ghafar Lango, after two years of his enforced disappearances. Over the past 20 years, numerous military operations have been conducted in the name of security. In areas like Dera Bukti, Kolu, Kahan, Avaran, Mashke, Jao, Tutak, Balgatar, Dasht, Bolan, and many other areas. These operations resulted in the deaths of hundreds of innocent people, and thousands were displaced from their native villages and towns. Unfortunately, these operations continue to this day in different parts of Balochistan. Like still Pakistan wants to invade Balochistan, like still Pakistan wants to displace people in Balochistan. This was just a brief story of oppression in Balochistan. After hearing this account, I hope you will not say that the term genocide is exaggerated, but we will say that the genocide term is a small term. People around the world have to discover a new word that could fit what Baloch is suffering back in their homeland. Ladies and gentlemen, in this region where we reside, all oppressed nations including Pashtuns, Sindhis, Mohajirs, Azara, Shias and Gilgitis are, are also victims of forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings. From the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa mountains to the Karachi Sea, thousands are deprived of freedom of expression and basic human rights. Some are uh, oppressed based on their ethnic and religious identity, while others are silenced from raising their voices for their rights. Political leaders like Manzoor Pashtin have been continuously and unlawfully detained from the last two months for advocating Pashtun rights. For the past 20 years, the Hazara community has been facing mass killings based on their relig religious identity. Sindhis, Mohajirs, and Shias are also experiencing forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings. For decades, Hindu and Christian communities have been facing oppression based on their religious identities. Moreover, even the Punjab today, political activists and journalists have forcibly disappeared based on their political affiliations and freedom of expression. Yet today, we stand united with all the ongoing people's struggle in this region. Whether it be the ongoing sit-in in Chaman or the ongoing protests in Gilgit, Baltistan, we stand in solidarity with Mohajirs, Sindhis, Azaras, Pashtuns, Shias, Hindus, Christians, and all oppressed communities and support their struggle. Moreover, Today, the people of Kurdistan, Palestine, Afghanistan, and many other oppressed communities are facing oppression. We stand with the subjugated peoples of the world, and today there is a need for coordination among the movement of oppressed people, and we hope for a joint struggle between the subjugated nations of the world. 
respected women, I extend my heartful appreciation to the women who have played a significant role in the movement of oppressed nations globally, including the ongoing struggle against below genocide. I firmly believe that the involvement of women in any movement is crucial. Women constitute an integral part of our society and their exclusion from any struggle based solely on gender is unjust. It is particularly important for women of subjugated nations to act actively participate in the struggle as they are subjected to extreme oppression. And without the participation of women, no struggle is efficient and no struggle is called people's struggle. The historic contribution of Baloch women in our ongoing long march against the Baloch genocide serves as an inspiration, not only for the women in our region, but for the women across oppressed nations worldwide. I emphasize the utmost importance of a collective effort among women from all nations, including Kurdish women. I believe establishing a channel and a common platform for communication and joint struggle is desirable and necessary. Honorable human rights activists and journalists, I extend my utmost gratitude to all the human rights activists and journalists who have played a constructive role in this movement, becoming the voice for the voiceless. Simultaneously, we appeal to all those human rights organizations, journalists and human rights activists to stand in solidarity with the struggles of oppressed nations worldwide, including the Baloch nation, and amplify their voices. It is crucial to bring to this attention that state institutions are persistently employing force and violence in, this, in the ongoing movement against the Baloch genocide, adopting a consistently aggressive stance to suppress this movement. Despite these challenges, we remain steadfast, hoping to counter these violent attitudes with unwavering determination. In this challenging time, we seek your support and assistance and trust that you will stand by us and you will witness with us what state is doing. Ladies and gentlemen, this International Conference of Oppressed People aims to promote unity among oppressed peoples globally, including those in this region. We comprehend the global oppression faced by the oppressed people today. And to end this oppression, it is imperative to foster solidarity in the struggles of oppressed peoples worldwide, alongside those in this region. Finally, on behalf of the Baloch Ekjati Committee, I express deep gratitude to the peoples of all oppressed nations, the honorable guests and speakers, and everyone who contributed to the success of this conference and also to the success of this movement, who are with us and who will be with us whenever we, will, we, we ask their support. Thank you very much.